I've often uh, felt that we live in a totalitarian society um, in as much as consumerism and um, being on the cutting edge with all the latest things and the latest ideas and the latest TV shows and uh, that sort of thing has so suffused our culture and our thinking um, that it has to a certain degree palliated us and made us um, far more docile than we would otherwise have been because people are too preoccupied with acquiring things, with doing home improvements, with uh, um, catching up with the latest reality TV shows, um, with um, getting ahead in their careers to actually stop and think about what's going on around them. I know that that's an arrogant uh, point of view to have. In other words, I see this, but everyone else is too stupid to see this. Um, but it is something that does continue to preoccupy me. One of the um, interesting things that I always note is um, very rarely do I actually go out shopping in the malls, in the big North American shrines to the retail uh, industry. But every time that I go in there, if the lineup is too long, I simply won't go in. I couldn't be bothered to wait in line for things that are, you know, that I don't necessarily need too much. I have other things that I would rather do. But it doesn't seem to bother people. People will get in their cars, make a big event of going out to the mall to buy things, to bring these things back and put them in their houses, and they will have thought that they've accomplished something, and then they do the same thing the next um, weekend when they have time off. Um, and that the very fact of worshipping at this shrine of consumerism, as people call it, gives them some sort of meaning, some sort of meaning to their lives. Now, I, again, I don't really think that, like a lot of people sneer at that, I don't think that that's necessarily a bad thing, when the alternative is people doing things that are a lot worse than this. The alternative to people being palliated by reality TV is, well, they go out and they riot in the streets, I suppose. Um, in the 19... 30s, when there were millions and millions of unemployed, thwarted people, um, they did cause an awful lot of trouble, i.e. they installed Adolf Hitler and Mussolini and it caused the Second World War. Now we can, when we lose our jobs, we can still generally get home and surf the net and, uh, and interact with people, and uh, we, can, um, we can, there are still things that we can do to palliate ourselves and to keep ourselves from getting too fed up with our lot in life. That's very Huxleyan, if you ask me. Um, it's very Huxleyan in that um, we're being controlled, but there may not actually be anybody up at the very top pulling the strings. That was the implication I found of uh, Brave New World, Huxley's Brave New World. The people at the top were more or less just watching what was happening and making minor adjustments here and there. And the system, the governmental system that, that had been created or had evolved essentially um, just needed to be left to run on its own. There was an autopilot built right into it, so it wasn't even really as though there was a big conspiracy going on. Um, and I believe that in a certain way our consumerist culture is like that. I don't believe that there's a bunch of people manipulating us all into being uh, consuming drones. I simply think that there's people at the top, or the people at the top actually, if you ask me, have bought into this in a bigger way than most people have. They believe that the more money that they have, the, the happier that they'll be. Of course, we've known that this is wrong since uh, the beginning of time, since we decided that there was such a thing as trade and money, that, um, yes, there's a certain amount of uh, money or the equivalent uh, goods that we need to survive in this world. But at the end of the day, trying to find mon happiness out of money and possessions is a waste of time. It's not going to work. So, I, but, so it is a little bit of an irrational philosophy that we've hitched our society to, but it does seem to be fairly pervasive. Um, I, uh, last October, I went to uh, Indonesia, and I was in the city of Bandung, and I went to a big mall, and it struck me as just how incredibly pervasive the Western culture of consumerism is. The mall that I was at, except for the look of the people, might as well have been here in Canada or in Los Angeles, for that matter. Um, including all the things like the, the signs to draw you into the store special today and the music playing in the shops and the fact that the, it being Halloween, they had um, 
the mall had organized a thing where children could be marched through the mall to the sound of a beating drum with uh, all dressed up in Halloween costumes. And it was just the Western consumer culture transplanted in Southeast Asia. And I'm sure that that is all over the world that is being replicated. It's an incredibly pervasive culture. I don't necessarily think that it's a bad one, um, the way some people do. Again, I don't believe that it's a big conspiracy, but it is ultimately an empty one, and it's and, and it's one that we know is empty, but we can't seem to break ourselves out of. And given the uh, the um, alternatives to it, I think that it may be actually. A preferable one to all the other uh, options that we've tried um, because when you get things like religion that causes problems when you get things like nationalism that causes problems when you get things like um, uh, unchecked greed that causes problems whereas the Western consumer culture says indulge your greed work hard acquire more things and uh, get things that way although again we have the the phenomenon which may or may not have taken place in Britain where people were looting because consumerism uh, had failed them or they believed that it had. Um, so there, are, there is a downside, of course, to that as well. But again, I think that in terms of how our, how our society is going, we're far more um, attuned to the Huxleyan model, the pleasure model, uh, than the pain and hatred model. Now that changes whenever we feel like we're being threatened. Uh, it got very Orwellian um, in the time uh, immediately following 9-11, uh, the original 9-11, September the 11th, 2001. People got uh, uh, very nationalistic and very fearful and very paranoid. And uh, I think that uh, there was an appetite at that time to do something particularly harsh, which um, happened, I guess. They invaded Iraq. Uh, but now that appetite has uh, dissipated, and um, we've gone back to Huxley. Whether or not this is actually going to fulfill us as human beings, I don't know. I doubt it. I doubt it very much. But sometimes I suppose it's good to put people to sleep. That way they don't uh, get up to the mischief they might otherwise get up to if they're awake. Thank you.